When it comes to buying a CPU for a desktop or a laptop, there's always that question. Should I get the i9 or save cash and get the i7? It's also the same case between the i7 and the i5. For desktops, there are a lot of videos with benchmarks and stuff out there on YouTube and pretty much everywhere already. And well, it's actually very easy to differentiate between the chipsets because they have different core counts. But unfortunately, even with benchmarks, it's a whole lot more complicated for laptops. But this how to buy guide is going to make it simpler for you guys, so don't forget to subscribe if you found this helpful. Anyways, back to the point. Benchmarks don't give the complete picture anymore and this Twitter post by Jared's Tech is a prime example with the i7 12700H trouncing the MSI's i9 in Cinebench R23 or R23, however you call it. It is thanks to the higher power limits obviously, but there is another reason. Even with the higher power limits, the reason that this happens is because unlike the desktop counterparts, except for the boost clocks, the i9 and the i7 in the mobile variants are pretty much identical. That means the MSI with the higher boost clock potential, 5GHz, is maxing out to nearly the same level as the Legion's i7 in the test. You need to know that just because the CPU has a higher boost clock, it's not going to reach that speed if the power limits are lower. And that, that statement right there is throwing almost 80% of all 12th gen Intel benchmarks out the window, cause whether the i9 is better than the i7 heavily depends on the laptop's configuration, model, and the manufacturer. You can see it in Jared's Twitter post just how low the MSI cross has scored with the same CPU compared to the Legion 5i Pro. Jared's tech is the most reliable source when it comes to these kinds of things, but you can cross check with results from other websites and other reviewers if you're not sure about this. There is also the difference between the i9 CPUs themselves. For starters, there are two i9s, the i9-1200HK and the i9-1200H. To be fair, they are pretty much the same processor even in terms of boost clouds, but what a lot of people don't tell you is that the i9-1200HK is always fitted without calibration in its stock Intel factory setting as it's open to overclocking, which means it's up to you to get the best out of the i9 and a lot of these laptops tend to work best in manual mode with personalized fan speeds and clock settings. The i9 12900H meanwhile is a locked CPU, so you can't go above the 5GHz speed, but some manufacturers like Asus ROG and Alienware like to calibrate the locked CPU for better performance or efficiency depending upon the laptop. Thus, factory set profiles like extreme or turbo modes in the software that the laptops are provided with works best without the need for personalization, so you don't have to do too much to get more performance out of it. So I would easily choose the i9-1200H over the i9-1200HK, but you tend to never get this option as manufacturers only fit either one of the two for the i9 configs. And considering the i9-1200HK is slightly more expensive than the i9-1200H, it's probably something you should think about. For the i7 you have two as well with the i7-12800H with the higher boost clock and the i7-12700H. So far only the razor blades get the i7-12800H so not too much to talk about here. And with that let's answer the question. Which of these four do you actually choose when it comes to buying a laptop? By cleverly pairing a 4K screen with the i9-12900H and leaving the QHD and the Full HD to the i7-12800H, the Razer Blade lineup shows what you should be doing. If you are planning to go for a desktop replacement and have your own external monitor or two, the i9 should be at the top of your list. It doesn't matter whether it has the i9-12900HK or the 12900H unless you are a high level enthusiast that likes to experiment with overclocking, as in most cases overclocking doesn't matter. If you are a programmer and you need something that competes with the MacBook's M1 Pro and Max chips, a i9-12900H would be needed, considering just how powerful the MacBook chips are. The Asus ROG Zephyrus M16 is a very good option here as it's one of the cheapest i9s you can get that runs the CPU close to its max power limit. I have a video on that, you can check it out if you want to know more about it. And also Dave2D also pretty much backs what I'm saying here. Anyways, finally, creators with streaming slash video editing needs can look at the Razer Blades i7-12800H with the better boost clocks compared to the i7-12700H. But the i9-12900HK and the i9-12900H is your best choice especially as you might be forced to get it anyways if you want the 4K display for your creative needs in some of the laptops. Obviously VivoBook and stuff, I'll talk about them in my future videos. For almost anyone else, especially for someone that carries their laptop around and for casual gamers and for someone that just wants to use their laptop as a laptop, you'll be just fine with the i7-12700H. The i7-12800H is better but that is only in the Razer Blades for now so be on the lookout. I know the i9 might be tempting if you have the budget but unless you can find a good deal like the Asus ROG Zephyrus M16 with the i9s or you are one of the few people that fall under the categories for the i9 I mentioned. Get a hold of yourself and stick with the i7. You will be just as happy and you will have some cash to spare for some headphones, mouse, a mic, I don't know, anything. I do have more how to buy guides for laptops, smartphones and a lot of other things coming soon. So again, don't forget to subscribe and hope this helped.